So we've been covering a lot of gaming headsets here lately, right? And a lot of them have been kind of just me so-so. But this headset we're going to talk about here today has me really excited and I think it's going to excite a lot of you all too because there's a feature on this headset that every single one of us have asked for in our gaming headsets before. So make sure to stay tuned and wait to see what that is. But the headset we're going to talk about is the Turtle Beach Stealth 600 Gen 2 Max. Now as far as in your box, of course you can get your headset and they have them in a wide array of colors. White, reds, blues, the black as we have here. You get your detachable USB-C charger charging cable, and then your dongle, which we're gonna talk a lot about this later, but you all know where we have to start. We have to start with that comfort. And as you see, you have that full swivel flat and a little bit forward in there, and your ear cups go in and out. As far as adjustment, right on that arm, it holds this clicky position very nice and easy, and it has those little numbers right there so you can remember where you had your set, and it holds this position really nice. Now, spinning them out right here, looking at these ear cushions. Yes, they do still have that weird shape as they had in the old ones right there, where it kind of shoots up right here, rather than being nice big full oval and when we look at the dimensions you can see right here now I want you to focus on the opening right here not the top to bottom ear cushion focusing on the opening right there and you can see the dimensions and then looking at the width right there and why I call that out as far as the shape of the ear pads is when I put this on my head I do feel the tip of it kind of pressing in on the very top of my ear right here right it just kind of presses in right there now it's not uncomfortable it doesn't really hurt me it's honestly I kind of got a search for it to really feel it. So again, it's not really bothersome. And that's because these ear pads are very plush and very soft. You got that cloth material outside, which is, again, it's a real nice soft. It's not rough or anything like that. And then on the inside, you have that pleather. So again, even though they're goofy shaped and they do right up here kind of touch my ear, it doesn't really bother me too much. Now coming up to the headband, it's fully pleather and it is plenty plush. It goes right across the head right there. So no aches and pains up there either. And taking a look at the weight of the headset here, we are going to get 296 grams. And with a combination of all that comfort right there, again, putting it on your head, it is definitely, I'd put it right on that line of a medium clamp and force. I'm not getting any painful pressure points again. It stays on my head perfectly fine, but no, I don't think I can give it the stinking cozy badge, but I can definitely give it the cozy badge or a very very comfortable badge right there because again I did notice it on the top of my ears which will be different for everybody's ear size or shape that could just be me you know what I mean but I never caught myself once saying ouch or hey they're annoying let me get them off my head for long game sessions I was perfectly fine with the comfort here so how about the build of the headset and as you've probably seen looking it over it is completely plastic our hinges down here our microphone flip down our joints up here and actually that headband going up into there where we adjust is completely plastic now talking about that looking at it you've also probably seen that the plastics are very thick and durable they're not very chintzy like when I press them or pinch them I'm not getting any flex in it and again in the hand it feels solid it doesn't feel like any chintzy plastic but talking about that being solid thick durable plastics when I stretch them out like I want to go to right here but like I always state if you got a you know a head shape that's bigger than this we're gonna have to start looking and having a different conversation you know what I mean but no I can't really take them and bend them and I can twist them up perfectly fine but when again I stretch them out right here I get a little nervous because I start feeling some tension but let's be honest who the heck's gonna be stretching her headset like that you know what I mean I do that simply to test weak points and I would rather break my product than you breaking your product all right so let's go ahead and talk features and functions we'll do that mic test and then we'll roll right into sound but looking at features and functions on the back of our left ear cup is all of our controls simple and easy everything's on the left I absolutely love that Right up here, you have your vo uh, volume wheel. Bottoms out at the lowest, tops out at the highest. Over here, you got your game to chat. Again, bottoms out at the lowest, tops out at the highest. This only works on Xbox on this version right here. Over here, you have your mode button, which is bass boost, treble boost, vocal boost, signature sound, and then you have your superhuman as well, which we'll talk more about in the sound, but you can cycle through all that right there. You got your power button, USB-C charging, and then again, your flip down and flip up to activate microphone. And you can also tilt it in a little bit as you see right there. And as far as using the headset, you get up to 48 hours of battery life, which is one of the upgrades from the previous gen. And then the 700s and then the 600, not max version, the regular 600s, they all have an updated battery life right there along with that USB-C charging. So the thing I really wanna show you guys and share with you, which I think is awesome, is this dongle right here. whoop de doo it's a dongle, right? But anyways, when you flip Flip it over, as you can see, you have USB and Xbox, if we're getting focus right there, and every new Gen 2 Max or whatever of these Turtle Beach headsets, you have that switch. 
So what you can do is flip it over here to Xbox, but say if you want to use it on your Switch or your PlayStation, click it over here to USB, bam, and you can control it that way. Same with on PC. Well, on PC, you can leave it on Xbox or USB and it'll work, but it's cool to be able to use this on every single platform. So that little simple feature right there is game changing. We actually seen this in, I believe it was the Steel Series Arctic 7X, and then the Arctic 1 Xbox version, I believe is where we could also switch that right there. But the cool thing, again, Turtle Beach is marketing it as this. Also works on PlayStation, PC and Nintendo Switch and it's designed for Xbox right there having that voice control on the Xbox right there and that's cool we've never really seen at least I haven't seen a gaming headset marketing as working across every single platform I don't know how they uh, got across this or were able to make this happen but this is awesome you need one headset for every platform now. And now you're hearing the microphone on the Turtle Beach Stealth 600 Gen 2 Max. Heck of a mouthful right there, right? But anyways, you're hearing this microphone. Again, just flip up to mute and flip down to active. It's so cool that you got that little tilt. So it's out right now, and now it's out going straight. And by the way, it's not in my vision. I absolutely love that. So again, it's not right in front of my face. It's kind of down there and out, right? Pull it in, and this is what it's going to sound like here. As far as the microphone, it seems like it's picking up pretty good. Now, one thing I want to uh, call out right here is as far as whenever you flip it up, you flip it up to mute again and flip it down to active you get a tone a lighter tone going up and then a deeper tone going down which is really cool so again you know it really gets into that locked mute position and all in all guys like seriously the features and functions of this headset from the microphone being flip up like that it's attached it's off into the ear cup which i think is super cool all your controls being on the back left ear cups. You're not like, wait, is voice chat over there? Is volume over here? You know it's all right on that left side. And being able to switch back and forth from each platform with one dongle across the board right there. Guys, the features and functions are hands down phenomenal on this headset. So I just listened to the playback of that microphone test right there, and I gotta say, man, the microphone sounded really good. I just love it how it's blended right into the headset. It's not this big bulky thing that's always out there, and you got that simple flip down. I really like it. One thing I forgot to mention is, yes, there is side tone on this headset. Side tone is whenever you hear yourself talking to the microphone, so you're not screaming at night or something, you actually tell how loud you're talking. Unfortunately, there's no way to enable or disable it on the headset. You have to do that within the Turtle Beach software. That's a little bit of a stinger. But again, cool that you have the feature if it's something you like. All right, so now talking about the sound. These guys are using 50 millimeter drivers that freaks range of 20 to 20,000 right here. And again, using them across every single platform, PS5, the Nintendo Switch, the Series X, PC, and Mac. And just spoiler, I had a great time using this across every platform. Starting with the PS5, playing Forbidden or Horizon Forbidden West right there. The detail of the bow, busting off pieces of the bots right there. The dialogue, the environment, everything was potent and crisp. I had that immersion and I had that detail. Nothing was overdone. It, it was fantastic sound right there. Coming over to Xbox, I've been playing a lot of MLB The Show and then uh, Forza Horizon on there. So talking about a racing game or even a sports game with like the crowd in the background. The crowd wasn't screech or overdone. You still heard that ball hitting off the bat right there and it goes right into like Forza right screeching the tires but still coming through some some headsets you kind of got that crowd that's really like screeching or the tires are screeching too much it's not it was perfectly done right here again you had that immersion and you had that detail kind of doing it all now coming over to PC my primary platform right I'm playing a lot of Halo dabbling with some more Call of Duty right there and it was just crisp. Halo's a tough one to really pull out for some headsets because those footsteps are using a little bit more bass rather than highs that we see in something like Rainbow Six or something, right? And it actually worked right there. I had the detail of the footsteps going on, but I still had the immersion of like, say, a grenade or a spanker or something like that. Same deal with Call of Duty, right? I had it all right there because I like that immersion. I like detail. I like to have that competitive edge or whatever when I'm hearing the footsteps and the reloads around the corner, but I still want to be immersed in my game, right? We're all gaming to have fun, right? And I still want to have fun. And again, I had fun with these. Even going on watching videos, a proof watching my videos on YouTube right here. And it sounded natural. My voice wasn't too deep or too high or too echoey or anything. It sounded crisp and clear on it. Going right into music, right? I've been listening to a lot of the new Jack White. And wow, it was just, again, like I stated on everything else, it was fun. It was immersive. 
and it was detailed. I had a blast with it. Now you do also have those other sound profiles, as I mentioned before, the bass boost, the treble boost, the vocal boost, you have superhuman hearing and all that, and then the signature sound. Me personally, everything I just talked about as well was with using signature sound. Now yeah, I did test all those other profiles, but again, it's not really my thing. I love that stock Turtle Beach sound right there. It's crisp and like I said, detailed and fun. All right, so after looking over the headset here, there's two key questions we need to ask ourselves. Number one, is it worth the MSRP of 130 bucks? Yes, it is. Features, functions, the comfort, it does a lot for that price tag. I really truly think it justifies that price tag. Number two question you need to ask yourself, say you got the original 600s or the Gen 2s, is it worth that upgrade? Well, that's gonna really depend person to person. If you have multiple platforms or if you're looking at getting multiple platforms, hands down, yes it is. But if you just play on PlayStation or you just play on Xbox, nah, you really don't need that upgrade. Cause again, the biggest upgrade is being able to use it across all of the platforms right there. And then again, that's really gonna justify person to person. But all in all, I think we have a complete win right here.